Each end of summer, autumn, birds of prey all over Europe head south to Africa for the winter. Many stop off on Malta for a well-earned break. I have stood watching as hundreds mixed species of these glorious birds arrive to roost on the island. We, the volunteers there, aim to video evidence of the illegal shooting of these protected birds, protected by laws. But most of the time, we can only hope that our presence will deter one or two of the hunters from shooting and so save a few lives. This is a poem I wrote that describes some of the many emotions I feel in that helpless situation. Exhilaration, trepidation, ambivalence. The skies fill with raptors, they're coming in to roost. Horror, dread, anxiety. The hunters are out there and we can't save them all. Or adoration, that moment when a giant swoops by and looks me in the eye. Anger, devastation, desolation, as I witness a life tumble from the sky. Despair, helplessness, grief, I was there. My first volunteering trip to Malta with the Committee Against Bird Slaughter, CABS for short, was during the spring hunting season of 2014. On my return home, I honestly felt like I needed to go into rehab. It was like I'd been in a war zone. Droves of Rambo wannabes roamed the countryside, polluting the air with the sound of gunshots, polluting the ground with lead pellets. You had to wear a cap. And when the gunshots went off, you literally had to look down so that the pellets weren't hitting you in the face. They were attempting to obliterate anything with feathers. Each hunter was allowed to kill or bag a specific number of birds during the spring open season of just two quarry species, which were the turtle dove and the quail. And now the turtle doves are in serious decline throughout Europe, but the Maltese hunters refuse to accept that hunting this species is not sustainable. Their attitude is that the decline is not their fault, so why should they stop killing them? I spent that first week witnessing hunters shooting at grey herons, at swallows, kestrels, birds that are familiar to us in the UK, but also more exotic species that would otherwise have been so exciting to see, such as rollers, beaters, golden orioles and so many more. If it was flying within range, they took a shot at it. The rarer the species, the better. It was like stepping back to the hunting days of the 1800s. Shooting isn't the only issue, of course. The hunters use all sorts of traps, including nets and cage traps, plus live birds or bird call recordings to lure down wild birds that are passing over. That first week, I helped collect evidence and get a trapper charged by the police. On climbing up a steep quarry bank, we secretly managed to observe laid nets with caged ortolan buntings used as lures alongside the nets. I mean... I'd never seen an ortolan bunting before and there I was witnessing birds in cages which were subsequently released by the police, thankfully. Whether we were secretly filming footage of crimes that we could pass to the police or bodyguarding birds until they left the island alive, by the end of that week, I was hooked. Since that year, 2014, I've been back to Malta, volunteering in my holidays, every year, sometimes twice a year, All year round there seems to be wildlife crimes occurring there, associated with the spring and autumn open hunting seasons, wader trapping, finch trapping and of course the killing of more iconic, charismatic and larger species such as the birds of prey, flamingo, storks. I mean, how does a man face his daughter that evening knowing he shot and killed a pink flamingo that day? But why do I do it? Friends are always asking, how can I bear to see all that death? Well, I work as my day job in wildlife conservation and whatever you're working on in this sector, it can take years before you actually see the positive outcomes of your effort, your projects, whatever it is you're working on. When I'm out there on the front line, as we call it, I 
get this sense of instant gratification. Not for the dead birds, obviously, but for that day spent getting vital evidence filmed that could get that poacher a fine or even a lifetime ban from hunting. The day we spent, or th- two days, three days, following a rare eagle, bodyguarding it, and we saw it leave Malta alive, continuing on its way. We kept it alive. We did that. And that is instant gratification in my world. Mm-hmm.